Stuxnet. 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 The Stuxnet superworm that's targeted Iran's nuclear program. Stuxnet was the first cyber weapon, and it was reportedly written by the US and Israel to attack Iran to try and cause centrifuges in their uranium enrichment facilities to explode. Originally, a computer in Iran crashed, and the operators called in a security company from Belarus. That security company sent out an alert to all of the security industry saying, hey, we found this thing, it's doing something weird, it's worth your while looking at it. Within a month, the computer bug grabbed the attention of Liam Omerku, an operations manager for Symantec. We looked at this and we could see this is like nothing we've ever seen before. There was more resources needed to analyze Stuxnet than any other threat we've ever looked at. So we had people analyzing Stuxnet 24 hours a day for about four months. It just blows anything else out of the water. Normally we can analyze a virus in half an hour, maybe a complex one in a week. Stuxnet appeared to be crawling around the world computer by computer, looking for some sort of industrial operation. Immediately we saw it was attacking industrial control systems. Industrial control systems can turn on a conveyor belt, they can sense temperature, they can shut down a plant. They're what make all plants and, and factories run. So the creators of Stuxnet wanted it to be very targeted, but the environment that they wanted to get into is not connected to the internet. So what the attackers were trying to do is get the contractors to bring in an infected laptop, an infected USB key. In order for that to happen, they had to actually infect a lot of people because they didn't know which one of these people was going to be the one who would carry it into the plant. We had about 250,000 infections in the US, Australia, UK, Germany, France, Malaysia, India, all over the world. The worm needed to spread out as much as possible in order for it to try and find a path into the uranium enrichment facilities. They were prepared to take that risk of being discovered by being more aggressive. That's ultimately the reason why it was found. The challenge with Stuxnet is whoever created it spent tens of millions of dollars at least to develop it, years of research. And the problem is, is when we create a cyber weapon, it doesn't explode. It causes its damage, but it exists. You know, somebody gets infected, they take their laptop off the network and they're gone traveling for a month. They come back, they connect it into the network and suddenly it's spreading all over again. Even years later, we have energy companies coming to us and saying, we found this in our environment and we look at it and it's the same Stuxnet that we saw from three years ago. So it's actually quite difficult to eradicate it completely. The Iranians caught it, figured out what happened, decompiled it and reverse engineered it. Stuxnet opened Pandora's box. It showed that these systems can be attacked and actually here's a blueprint of how you can do it. So it's as if we've dropped a atomic bomb that didn't explode with an instruction manual. And now people can take that same bomb and throw it over the fence at us. So the problem with the proliferation of cyber weapons is that you don't control who gets them. Everybody can get them. And then we have the situation of mutually assured destruction yet again. I want you to just think for a moment about what happens if there's what's called a false flag attack. Somebody appears to be attacking from country A. It's actually country B masquerading as if it's country A. And we choose a massive response against country A. The consequences of this could be devastating. When you add in the human aspect that you could have millions of people without electricity. The car doesn't start, the diabetic pump won't work. You could have a shutdown of society because there's no water available. It could be relatively catastrophic and bring us back to a pre-industrial world for a period of time. Securing those systems and making sure that they run, that's really a grand challenge. People don't realize that behind all of these systems, there's computers and those computers need to be protected.